little early today. Why? Because YouTube is free and I'm already up and I already got my coffee going, so you might as well kick this pig. I'm the Grow Boss. If you have any questions about cannabis, smoking cannabis, growing cannabis, using cannabis for medical purposes, we've got about an hour to go. Maybe we'll do a little longer take. We started, started the show early. <laughs> I said shardy. So, I'm going to go ahead and finish up a couple more chores and I'll be back in 10 minutes.
I see the bong rip boss comment, and that's funny. Yeah, because getting ready for the show involves me sitting here and getting high behind this video. Behind this video. Yes, that's what, that's what getting ready for the show involves me doing, is getting high behind that video. <laughs> That was for me, Clecto, sweet.
I think basically I'm ready to start the show. <clears throat> if we were to uh, look at my office table, because technically for the next hour or so, this is going to be my office table. Um, I, I, I'm, as, I'm already here. I might as well start the show. So welcome to Cannabis Hotline. If you know what the show is, we're going to talk about growing. If you've got questions about growing cannabis, if you've got questions about using cannabis or smoking cannabis, I'm the Grow Boss. I wrote the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. We'll get more into that later, and we'll go over some of my sponsors, of course. But for now, we'll get the show started. Um, the number is 84 Grow Boss, 184 G R O W B O S S, if you want to call. Um, there's always a call, like if I'm on a call. There's nobody, there's no sound engineer here answering the call, so I'll just ignore you. Maybe you'll get on, maybe you won't, but that's how it's going to be for uh, the show. And because of that, we've had a little bit of problems with the mic in the past, and I've cut my own self off so you can't hear me talk. It was really pissing people off. So, in an effort to be more professional especially after some of the comments like man if i was a sponsor i'd make sure that shit works which is a totally fair comment in an effort to do that what i've solved is what we've decided to do is this i'm going to use live chat so you can immediately communicate with me and i even have an emergency phone line that if it rings i know my mic is off um so like anything when i tell you your third grow is your first grow how could it be otherwise how can you get it all right if you don't know what right is and i'll tell you i put an ad in craigslist just to get started um a few months back with this show and what i needed to do i was just going to hire somebody that knew and I, I i you guys i'm a dick in the store i know i'm arrogant on the show i know i understand but i'm it's my target demographic requires it like clearly i wouldn't go into like an like a old people home doing this but when you deal with a bunch of 18 to 49 year old dumb stupid aggressive males the only way to win is to be more arrogant yeah <laughs> uh, anyway i win about 85 percent of the time 15 percent of the time but then any store is not going to win all the time so I just went that route and, you know, it is what it is. <sighs> ah. However, so we're going to do a show today. We're going to talk about whatever it is you guys are going to call about. If there's a problem with my mic, we're going to do it like, you know, you guys can call in. So, so when I started to do this show, I figured, oh, it's pretty easy, right? You aim a camera at me and I just start talking. Listen, I got the talking part down. That's no problem for me. So the next part was the camera, and I figured, okay, so the show's pretty simple. And, uh, and then uh, the show's pretty simple, and all of a sudden, the equipment doesn't work, and I'm a pretty good hardware and software guy, and the equipment doesn't work. And so I put an ad on Craigslist. I have a guy call me up and tell me, oh my God, it's gonna be $1,500 worth of hardware. Trust me. And he was super arrogant. And I'm like, oh my God, who is this guy? People do this from their cell phone, right? Okay, so three months later, I am $1,500 deep into a computer with 12 ports, USB 3.0. Why? Because with six cameras, and this is my store cam, and this is my used equipment cam, and this is my grow boss cam, and this is my visitor cam, and <clears throat> with all these cameras and microphones and stuff, it turns out I bought exactly what that guy said originally. And that was a thing because it was the way he presented himself. But he was 100% right, and then it took me three months to learn that lesson, right? I bought some hardware, it didn't work, I learned my lessons, I eventually ended up at the right computer. So that said, it took three rounds to... Uh, you know, it took three months and several rounds of hardware to get the right equipment. I didn't know what it looked like. Now I know what it looks like. It looks like a $1,500 computer and a bunch of $50 cams from Logitech. And now it's super easy to do. And I can even use live chat. So it takes three runs to do something. You just can't be good at it the first time. You can be arrogant about it. Oh, hell yeah, I'm the best. Ah, oh, yeah. But and again, it's just like Captain Phil from the Cornelia Marie used to say, everybody wants the big time, 
Nobody wants to work for it. And so you want your third harvest to be better than the first. If everybody got a great first harvest, your weed would be worth dick. So that said, the number is eight the number is 84 grow boss. That's 184 grow boss. Ah, grinding up this weed has given me an allergy. Okay, too much light, too much water. <laughs> Light, too many nutrients. If you guys got a question, now's a good time to call. Otherwise, I tell you, we've got something coming up called Project Grow House. And I'm going to show you how to turn $10,000 into a $100,000, $10,000 investment <clears throat> into a $100,000 a year producing cannabis producing house. And just to catch you back up, this is the great root race, right? Where we're comparing basil seeds that get nothing to basil seeds that just get Clonex solution to basil seeds that get green pads, great white, great white with mycochum. So we've got all these tests going on and this is like, I think it's like eight five. And this is just the base control, 25 days, just Clonex solution, got nothing. Can see it pretty clear so got to give me something and so that's kind of where we're at with the great root race um ah, here we go take a call put the tv on mute this is the dangerous part where i either end up with an echo or I end up losing the mic all right you're on with the grow boss what can i do for you Hey, hey, uh, two questions for you, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Let's see. Um, I've been hearing rumors. Uh, I think it was a little delay. Um, I think I, I've been hearing rumors that 11 on and 13 off is the best way to go as opposed to 12-12. What's your um, intake on that? Uh, uh, I, okay, so let me ask you. Let's say you're right. Let's say you're right. 11 on, 13 off is better. Better how, sir? Better in terms of quality? In terms of quantity? Better how? Okay. No, no, you gotta, you gotta answer the question. You say it's, the rumor is that the bud is better. And so I'm asking better how. No, 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 no. Not, not better. Okay, yes, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the question originally. So my, the, the answer to that is, uh, what I've been reading is, whenever it's 11 off as opposed to 12 off, the extra hour gives it more time to accumulate more uh, crystal glands, as well as supposedly the argument is there's nowhere in the earth supposedly that has 12 light hours, and that's why it's more natural as well. I just, I don't know what I think about that. And you're the boss man, so I figured you'd be the best to ask. Okay. So first I'll say there is no place that gets total darkness without starlight either. And one of the things that they always talk about is that 640 nanometer wavelength that emits from stars. And that triggers the PF to convert into PFR even faster. And so even though you have a shorter night the conversion into flowering happens faster therefore you spend the same amount of time flowering at night now when you do it indoors apparently without pfr without 640 nanometers converting pf into pfr apparently with that you need a two hour running start inside a dark tent or dark room when they tell you that there's no light okay. when they tell you that there's no light allowed in the tent at night um the reason is is because even a small amount of light will convert all that pfr back into pf this is the chemical prior to the plant transitioning into sexing so you would wreck that night because the longer the pfr exists in the plant the quick the greater the flowers the quicker the transition this is what you're looking for so Right there, you right mm -hmm. there. There's a trade-off. Yeah. Okay, in terms of the twelve twelve versus eleven eleven thirteen, um, it always comes down to me for this: if there truly was a way to make a bud different, 
they would put it on the little labels on the jars at the dispensaries, right? They would be like, oh, this bud was mm -hmm. flowered with 1113. And you would look at it and you would be like, oh my God, this bud was flowered with 1113. <laughs> if you were able to see that, I would say, okay. But perhaps you, so this is the whole thing. One, you've defined it as more crystals. But more crystals than what? Because in 1984, it was 8% border weed. Now it's 28% weed. And yet, that's more crystals. I mean, that's three and a half times more crystals. Mm -hmm. So if you want three and a half times more crystals than that, you could smoke wax. Wax is the extract of the trichomes. So what I'm, su <laughs> so what I'm suggesting yeah. is... I don't know what it is that makes weed any better. It's not the purity. Is it the weight per watt by growing, driving the cost down? And so I always ask you guys, oh, you tell me, what do you think the difference is? And then you have to go ahead and grow your plants under a 12 mm -hmm. 12, do a really good job three times in a row, take good notes so you're always improving, and then. Do it with eleven thirteen and see what happens. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Um, Second question. Another another light question. I, I I keep I keep reading another light question or about how before you harvest, it's best to turn off the lights completely for forty eight hours and then back on for twenty four and then you go ahead and harvest. What do you think about that? I think you're 99.85% of the way done. What you would have to do, again, one of the things that I never pretend to know is these super fine detailed points, and nobody can, because if you're asking me down to the point of such a fine detail that I can't tell you from here, what I can tell you is yeah. that if you had a great harvest, you could take one of the plants out a week early and harvest it you could do whatever you want with the light and test it on another plant you would know wow you would know after you did that but yeah. I, I just want to make the observation oh, yeah. that that there is so many fine details there are so many little nitpick details that yes they all make a difference but how much how much of a difference does each right. one of them make? Yeah. So in terms of better bud, I always like to just like tell you guys straight up, there is no better bud. All you can do is do this correctly. If you can do this correctly, mm -hmm. then you'll get great bud. Yeah, I agree with you. I think you, uh, you definitely answered my question. I guess one more bonus question. Why not? I was also recently reading that you can, um, what's it called? Whenever the whenever the flowering, the buds are growing, you pinch the tips of the buds off, and that will produce them to get bigger and larger. Have you ever grown before? Uh, <laughs> yes and no. Tell me about um, your grow. Tell me what happened at your. Tell me about. It. Yeah, certainly. Um, first, like you said, it's a while ago. First few times, terrible learning experience. I stumbled across your YouTube page. Much better, much better. Um, lighting was lighting was a big thing. Like you, the first video I saw of yours was talking about lighting and everything, and that really hit hey, home. That that was a game changer. Everything's looking gorgeous now. Honestly, I I don't even have anything to complain about. I'm just looking for ways to improve now. Ah, okay, so that's something interesting, and that's an entirely different question. So what you've done is you've done some research, and you found these individual things that you think may improve your yield. So let's talk about where you are in your yield. So what light do you have? <laughs> okay, there's some pretty, they're beast lights, let me... Um... Let me pull them up. They're called Platinum LED 600s. Okay. All right. And and what's your yield? I have no idea. This is the first time there's actually going to be anything to do there. Okay. 
what was the light that you used last time? The light that I used last time here, let me see if this will work. Here is the platinum LEDs and the YouTube. Oh, I can't put it in the link. I'm sorry. No, like, All right, the don't... light I used last time was a head. Say that again. It was a. Hang on. It was a HID. Okay. Oh, how do you call it? That's fine. HID. HID. You got um, it. You got it. How many watts? Yeah. Was yeah. It I'm trying to think of. It was an 800 watt. But well, these two 600s actually put out the equivalent of supposedly 1,200 each. And I went from head to LEDs. Okay. So you went from an HID light that you said was 800. L let me let me just ask this: um, Was it a 400, a 600, or a thousand? What was it? Um, it was a thousand. Okay, so you had a thousand watt HID light. What'd you pay for it? Um, I want to say around 350 for the complete setup, which was the bulb and the little head, and okay, whatnot. But then I had to pay another like 200 for like a turbine and the vent system and whatnot because it's getting way too hot. Okay. And then you bought LEDs. Um, you bought two LEDs. What just platinum I bought LEDs? two LED lights that are roughly about 800 each. They're really good lights. Yeah, no, no, platinum is... They put uh... off... Go on, tell me. Oh, uh, they put off like no heat at all, it seems. Um... The 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 next day after we flipped on the lights of those bad boys, they just instantly like the, they just loved them. They loved them. The next day looks so much happier, so much better. Just amazed by how much lighting makes a difference. Hmm, that's a good experience that you had with them. Okay, I'm trying to find them. No, it's, it's remarkable. Excellent. So now you've got these two platinum LEDs. Have you finished yet? No, no, right now they're, um, right now they're, I want to say maybe two weeks left, I would guess. They're probably about 25, 30% orange hairs and just now started really producing THC grams popping out. Brilliant. How big of a space are your two lights in? The space of them? Yeah, are you in two four by four spaces? Is it four by eight? Yeah, what? How big is the space? Oh, just one single, one single plant underneath one single five by five, I believe, tent. With with one LED in it. Two, two of those two bad boys are in there. Okay. How when you talk about how full the canopy is, is like, do you have a trellis going up? You have one plant, so you gotta have a trellis, right? There's one plant, um, <laughs> I wish I was smart enough to use a trellis. I have one large stake that was tied, giving it support, standing up straight, but it doesn't really need it because it's a strong plant. But um, then I kind of like started tying tying its branches, not loosely, not tight, so it can still kind of grow, but kind of tying itself to itself. And it's kind of like holding it up pretty well. But it's a, it's a beautiful plant, it's big. Sweet. I'm I'm super happy that you're having a good experience with uh with with one plant for two LEDs. I'm excited to see next time what you do. What is that plant in by the way? Is it in hydro? Or are you doing a big bucket? What is that plant in? You know, it was I was doing hydro and I started taking some agriculture classes because, you know, I'm a ten year vet and I just not going back to school and I decided I'm gonna do something I'm happy and passionate about, which is not just this, but plants and stuff, you know. Um, so <laughs> I'm learning a lot here. I've been talking to this old guy who's been farming and growing himself for over 30 years. He knows some stuff, it seems, but some of it's not so much. Some of it's like white tails. Anyway, he convinced me to go soil. The hydroponics were just, I was running through too many problems because I'm a novice, I guess, but soil seems to be working fantastic. I'm using some soil called pit moss it's really cool stuff you can check it out on amazon i guess if you want to but um it's called pit moss and it's really good um i mix that in with some happy frog from but the more i look at your stuff in your videos the more i see i should probably do something else or something 
I let me just say this. You sound like you're having fantastic success, right? Like you're knocking it out of the park. You're not calling up with any complaints. You're a guy who's looking for a little more and who's already getting what you're supposed to. So I just wanted to say congrats. Two. <laughs> Thank you. It's all it's, it's because of you, man. I, I stumbled across your YouTube channel. Trust me, I watched many other YouTubes before. It was yours that hit home for me. It's just the way you're able to communicate makes more sense to me. Um, it just seems like, I don't know. We pre I, Not just myself, but everyone watching this right now. I'm sure we all appreciate you. <laughs> I can only do it because I work at a hydro store and I see a thousand of you guys a year so I can put all the parts and pieces together in a way that makes sense. In a way that nobody could before, yeah. Because I literally work at a hydro store, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, number <laughs> number two, I, I would like to suggest that with um, that with the two lights that you have in there that you should be expecting like a pound and a half approaching two pounds based on the amount of electricity that you're using okay <laughs> um number three there are two yeah. people there are two people that grow in soil and that is the new guys and the masters and be, that's because they just want their bud and the rest of their time they don't want to be in there dicking around with hydro so i applaud you on your decision mm -hmm. um to go in soil and that's always um, that's always super cool because it makes it so much easier to recover from a problem. So I appreciate the call. And, you know, I I'll tell you the art of actually growing, because I get a lot of people that come through my store that tell me, hey, oh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, go to school and learn how to grow. And I'm going to, I'm really in love with the plant and I'm going to do cannabis. No, you're in love with cannabis. You actually hate growing because all the dispensary employees that come through here, they all hate working at the dispensary at day two. Why? Because suddenly it's a job. I mean, this is a job. Even just sitting here, this is my desk, right? I mean, my desk has a uh, vape on it, a volcano on it, a grinder, sure, for the, for the bud because you always want ground bud in there, a bong, my books, this plate of uh, bud right here that I've been smoking on for the last couple of days. And um, I have no idea, it's pretty good. It dried out, I've been putting it in the vape thing. Right, I mean, this is my desk. It's my desk for 90 minutes today. It'll be my desk tomorrow. We use it in the videos. This is my office space here. So it's pretty sweet that my office space has a bong and some weed on it. But you guys come in thinking, oh shit, like I'm a, but it's a plant. There is nothing for you to learn how to do. All I do is teach people how not to kill their shit. The more you don't kill your shit, the more bud you get. That's the secret of growing cannabis. Don't kill your shit. So if you've got a question on the Grow Boss, the number is 84 Grow Boss. Go ahead and call in. Otherwise, I'll just chat for a little while until we smaller coffee cup on this show. Although it is pretty cool because I got a Grow Boss coffee cup, but it is a smaller coffee cup. And apparently it's only lasted 30 minutes into the show. See, it's the little fine-tuning things that you don't know about until you actually start doing them. Just like your third grow will be better than your first grow. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you guys about was Project Grow House. So in a few months, what we're going to do is we're going to put together a house. Hmm. We're going to put together a house where we take a $10,000 investment. And I'm going to show you how to grow $100,000 worth of cannabis in a year. And we've been considering a couple of different ways to do this. Uh, just got started on a good topic. 509, I will be with you in a sec. And so one of the couple of things that we were talking about was how to divide it up. So if we have a couple of rooms, let's just say we do simple three-bedroom house, um, master bedroom, you know, hallway, stairs, something simple, three rooms. What we were talking about is how much yield that would have to be based on weight. So we figured $100,000, because that, that was our goal, divided by 2,000 a pound, and that would give us a production of 50 pounds. And a lot of you guys ask me questions about just this because you want to know oh, what's my plant count 
And so I wanted to go over with you guys a little early on this, how, how I've kind of been working through which way we're going to do, because a lot of times what I do on the helpline and on the calls is I encourage you guys to take a moment and think about it. Like when you do a helpline call with me, usually you run 90 minutes. You guys either understand that you should buy the hour up front and we do 30 later, or you buy 30 and then an hour. But statistically, it usually goes about 90 minutes. And depending on what you're doing, there are usually a couple of things that I have to teach. I either have to teach you nutrients, I have to teach you light, or we have to go over techniques because you're not killing your shit I have to teach you about overwatering and it's all the same shit that's in the books. Or I have to build you something if you're not if you're not doing it already, we kind of get started. So there's a few ways that we start our conversations. And depending on where you're at, depends on if I overwhelm you in the first 30 minutes and then you call back in a, in an hour. But usually it breaks down to once we get to the end of the equipment that you need then we have another phone call in like three to seven days for half an hour to an hour depending on how far you got we talk about what's the appropriate ac we talk about what's the appropriate fan filters we talk about what's the appropriate equipment are you going to it's things as simple as how do you start your clones what's the space going to be i mean this is root this is root riot what based on the different ways that you do it i mean what's your what is your equipment are you going to buy new used are you going to buy how are you going to cool the space so there's all these things that go into that and one of the big questions is always that we think about at first is this is 50 pounds if i have to do that in 12 months then i'm looking at four pounds a month conservatively so if we can hit four pounds a month I'm somewhere in the range I already know that four pounds a month is either going to be 3,000 watts or it's going to be 2,000 watt plus light rail light mover plus co2 to get that yield oh and check out my new camera one of the upgrades I did is getting better at this was uh, was upgrade this camera so it's much more clear so it's more clear now excellent all right so now we know that we have a couple of options of how we can build our room or we can put three like uh 750 led lights something something along those lines we have like those couple of options so really the question is going to be no matter which one of these we do there's going to be so much heat we're going to have to deal with an ac so one of the components that we're thinking about in the house is always do you do a window ac or do you do a split unit so this would be a window ac window ac window ac or do we do a split unit outside where we put a head unit to each room which is just fine too but again one of the things that that you always have to wonder about is are you going to get a something with a homeowners association so there's going to be rules and regs some places uh, don't have like you know we're looking at property out here in Las Vegas right so some of the conditions are we have like the most master plan communities in like all of the United States like Summerlin is the most master plan and Henderson is spectacular there's like it's all retirees and cops there's no crime out here it's it gets fucking hot yeah but it's spectacular out here so the question is going to be which kind of house that we buy I mean I'm hoping to get something with like five bedrooms where there's something downstairs where I can put like uh like I can put an LED on a light rail mover with just a couple of plants. But basically we know that we're heading for four pounds with some sort of AC and either way that we do it, it's gonna cost us about the same. So we run some sort of AC on there and uh, that's one way for us to do it. So we know we have our yield and now we're talking about space. So for us to do four pounds a month, each of these rooms we would have to have like for instance this would be uh if the master bedroom was twice let's say the master bedroom was uh was one and a half times so this will be one x one x 1.5 x 
we know we're probably going to like <clears throat> we'll have two choices we'll either flower with all the lights on at the same time or what more likely we'll do is these two will be flower and this one here will be veg and it'll all be the same thing we'll have the same whatever setup we buy we'll buy for all three of them and then we'll start at that point but if we want that yield we have to put that equipment in so depending on the space for instance let's say the rooms are 15 by 15 ah I mean the, the answer is 15 by 15 so I'll, I'll show you 15 by 15 will give us one two three this is three times five by five space so you get that many spaces so you could put six lights if you could cool it but it would easily fit four lights one two three four and if we could do that in both of these spaces then I mean there's our four pounds in flour so we would take us four four lights plus four lights plus four lights so with 12 lights we could produce that four pounds a month number and then depending on what kind of AC we bought we would do co2 um, that would get us a little more and a light rail like if we went this route because when you look at my used equipment pile um, like right now in the used equipment pile if you you would have a couple of choices Ah, uh, we just sold our light rail light mover but I usually have a couple of light rail light movers on the equipment pile they're not up front I have more in the back but if you were going to do big hoods, like you were going to do four lights, low ceiling, wide scrog, if you were going to do that, oh, I've got 12 of these you could buy with no glass for 75 bucks each. If you, since you'll never dim the light again, you can buy 1,000 watt ballast for that many for 60 bucks each. And I've got used 1,000 watt bulbs in the pile. I mean, I've got a can fan, like a 10 inch max fan for 120 bucks how cheap is that now clearly that wouldn't work if you were buying like a little 1000 watt something like this or e5 something like that but I mean, i've got on craigslist six inch fans for 80 bucks yeah i mean i've got digital dimmables used for 100 bucks yeah totally so you could literally set up this system for what like 12 times ten dollars each for the bulbs what 12 times 65 for the ballast 12 times 75 for the hood um, 140 like 150 a setup if you came so I mean what we're talking about like 15 1800 dollars so we've got 1800 bucks to set up something like that shit even if we got on eBay so we got on eBay and we do a split AC unit twenty two thousand twenty two thousand not a nine thousand four ton thousand um, even something ready to install I mean even if I just bought even if I just bought, let's see, 22,000, three of these. Even if I just bought three of these and put one in each room. And they have more efficient ones. But I mean, I'm at $3,500. $3,500 for an AC. For an AC. And, uh, yeah, $3,500 for an AC. I mean, we were at $1,800 for the lights. That's if you shop around. If I looked on Craigslist, you know, not every store has enough used to do that for you. You'll call around. Hopefully, you'll be able to buy it from a store. Yeah, check that out. I mean, that's, I mean, we're at 43, 5,300. We got to buy a couple of CO2 burners, but we'd have to do CO2 anyway because at that point, CO2 is worth 25%, right? You would always add more CO2 because if we get, if we get, 2,000 watts plus 25% for the light rail plus 25% for the CO2. And I know I just casually write that on a piece of paper. 
And I know I'm about to open up my own book and quote my own self, which is always weird, and I understand that. But, oh, I guess this was the book I used last week. <laughs> I probably did it for a customer. It's always the same thing. It doesn't matter. Um, yield, this is yield. Yield is based on three things. Light, plant health, and volume of canopy. That means you have to have, if you have a thousand watt light, plus you have a light mover, plus you have CO2, then if you have a thousand watt light plus 25% plus 25%, you would technically have a 1500 watt light. I mean, you're gonna get the yield, otherwise why would you be using those things? And if you think about photosynthesis, light, water, CO2, that's literally light, more light, and CO2, because if you add more water, we both know what's gonna happen. You're gonna overwater your plants, kill your shit. So you'd have 1500 watts, but the condition is your plants have to be 100% healthy because you can't flower six shitty plants and expect to get the right results, right? And you have to have a garden that's 100% full because if you have a half full garden of six shitty plants, it doesn't matter how much light you have, right? That's what we're talking about. That's the math of this equation. Ah, it's always uh, super funny when you guys tell me about the plant count, you guys worry about the pinching and the topping and all of the details. And yes, they all matter. But they only matter when you're good, right? When you're good, the little details, then they become important. But the base skill, you got to get down first. That's why I tell you, don't worry about all the details. Don't kill your shit. Don't worry about a perfect environment up front. All right, if you guys have any questions, I'm the Grow Boss. The number is 84 Grow Boss. Now's a good time. Um, this is one of the way, this is one of the gardens that I'm thinking of at the moment, depending on how many rooms we buy for Project Grow House. And then, now that we know how many watts we uh, are looking for, Maybe later we can talk a little bit more about plant count and light rotations because the different ways we set up our light rotations and how long we spend in veg uh, will all determine plant count. Oh yeah, and that whole legal thing about what we are and are not allowed to do. You know what I mean? Hi, you're on at the Grow Boss. What can I do for you? Hey, GB. Hey, I bought your book. Uh, I love it, and uh, I didn't see the uh, your show on earlier, so I had emailed you uh, some questions about it. But the uh, I have a question related towards um, you, you. You talk about how we have uh, THC receptors, yes. and uh, when we smoke, it goes into the blood, and then it goes to the brain barrier, and then once it's filled up, that's it. Well, my question is: is what what happens when you eat it and then you smoke it? Is that the same thing? Because I always feel a little bit different. Okay, so when you eat it, it goes through your stomach and it's digested by your liver, processed differently and sent through the brain blood barrier differently than if you were to smoke it. So it, yes, it's different receptors and where, and where alcohol always works on the same receptors, whether you inhale it or you uh, drink it because they have that new inhale alcohol it, it passes through the same way and it affects the central nervous system always that's why you can continue to get drunker and drunker and until you pass out and you can have a toxicity overdose and kill yourself with too much alcohol we hear that happen a couple of times a year with people now when you eat it it affects the motor coordination and the central nervous system differently than when you smoke it. That's why the effects are so different. And people with central nervous diseases like multiple sclerosis and seizures are benefiting from those. Is it from the CBDs and the CBNs? Possibly yes. There hasn't been any research done, enough research done yet because it's been illegal for so long. But what we're talking about now is the same drug done different ways with different results. It's no different than dopamine on an issue to a person. Very small amounts will affect your kidneys. Very large amounts will vasoconstrict you and drive up your pressure. And so different drugs taken different ways will affect you in 
diff with different results. The difference between snorting crystal meth and giving kids Ritalin, same methylphenidate drug, yet the results are so startlingly different, yet it's the same drug. And that's because of the processing. Uh, the metabolizing, when I say processing, I mean the metabolizing of your liver, liver breaks it down. There are byproducts from your kidney on diabetics can't take some drugs because their kidneys can't process the drugs. So there are always these limitations and conditions when, when you consider how you're going to consume it. And that's why we're seeing effects that are so different. Understand? Yeah, but do they stack when you smoke and eat? Do they stack? Um, yeah. Yes, they stack. However, I'd like to suggest this. You can smoke pot and do alcohol, and do they stack? Absolutely. But it's drowned in effect. You would not notice, yes, they stack, but you would tend to not notice. You would tend okay. to not notice the, uh, the high from the weed because it would be overrit, overrode by the central nervous system and the signals that are being sent. Um, I'll tell you that I can smoke all day. I can sit here and smoke on this show from now until the next show, and I do. But as soon as I eat, THC, it always seems like it's too much. I fire everybody and I try to burn the place to the ground. So I tend not to eat cannabis so much because I don't like the effects. Um, it also, an hour and a half after I eat cannabis, I'll stand up and I'll be like, whoa. And all of a sudden I'll start getting a little woozy and I'll be like, what the fuck? Am I getting like a blood pressure issue? You know, you always think that when you're, when you're a paramedic, you always think, oh my God, is it an aneurysm? Am I, am I? So, is it a blood pressure issue? And then I remember about an hour and a half ago, I ate cannabis. And like, oh, I can't, I can't drive if I eat cannabis. But I suppose I could if I smoke it all day long. It doesn't even affect you the same way. What else? I hear you. I run into walls when I eat it and I can smoke all day. So that's why I was curious. That is exactly my experience with cannabis. Eating and smoking it too. I bounce off the fucking walls. All right, my friend. I appreciate the call. Thank you so much. Um, hit me up with an email. I'll send you a little Grow Boss fun pack. Okay, this is one of those danger spots where I lose my mic or I've got the wrong thing up. And so well, part of my checklist from doing this last time and making the show more professional is that when I end a call, I'm supposed to double check that my mic is on, that I hit some button that turned my mic off. And that the right thing is on the screen. Um, so that's, uh, that's the new routine. So I'm more professional, uh, when we do this. All right. So the, it's 84 grow boss. Um, if you guys have any questions about growing oh, we got another, let's see. Hi, you're on with the grow boss. What can I do for you? Good morning. How you doing? Grow boss? Good morning. Calling from, uh, South Texas. You sound like you're calling. I want to tell you, your, your show is off the hook. I have learned so much. I have. I know you don't dress a lot of uh, hydro, but I do have a question that I know the grow boss can help me with. Go. I have a ebb and flow. I have a four by two ebb and flow uh, system, hydroponic system. 600 watt uh, HPS lights um, using uh, uh, organic nutrients. I'm in my fifth and final week of veg, getting ready to switch over to flower today. Um, for the last week, uh, my system is, has a tendency to go up in pH. Uh, always does. I, mean, I use a lot of uh, pH down. But for the last five days, my pH is trending down. And since I'm a first-time virgin grower, uh, it's concerning me. I don't know why, and I haven't been able to find anything that could tell me why it's doing that. Uh, they look fantastic. Uh, I think I sent you pictures on it. Um, but I'm just really concerned <laughs> if there's something I'm doing wrong. Okay, so... I, what I get is, guys, happy with his plants, 
the it's a finesse thing at this point for you so let me fill in a couple of blanks when you say two by four are you on a tray uh yes two by four grow tray using uh, uh grow down box and i have a uh, clay pebbles bed okay when you say grow down block tell me a little dude do you have your what size what size grow down are you in uh, I went from one inch to four inch, and then I took the four inch and just stuck it on top of the six inch, and okay. let, the, let the roots grow into and through. Okay, the four inch that you have was it a shorty? Was it a four by four by two and a half? Was it a four by four by four block? Four by four by four. Okay, so it's a four by four by four block that you then went ahead. And oh, oh, you know what? Um, if I may take a moment and pull up a picture, let's see. Okay, I'd like to, I'd like to use this picture. And okay, so I'm gonna leave this picture up. You're gonna get it so people can get a general idea of what you're talking about. And now let's you and I go to, let's you and I continue on with the details. So you're 600, you have a four by four stack on a six by six Hugo. So you have a Delta stacked on a Hugo. That's fine. Um, how big is the, you said, how many plants do you have? Three. Okay. And you, you had said one more thing that I would like to bring out. You said, you were you were in a tray of rock bed so let me ask you sir please did you tell me you did not fill up like a like a tray with rock and then net like just loose rock did you just do loose rock in a tray no i use clay pebbles yes sir the clay, clay pebbles clay, clay pebbles. yes sir hydroton we could just call it rock or hydroton yes sir. did you just set the oh, okay did you just set the cubes on the tray and then fill the tray up with rock with hydroton yes yes i just i just put up the blocks there i took the cover off the blocks okay put them inside and then filled it, filled it up with the clay pebbles okay so let me just ask would you ever do that again would you ever put loose rock in there again if they look beautiful and i i don't have a problem with it Okay. I'm going to get them the first time or so. Okay. Was it expensive? Did you have to use a lot of bags? I uh, used uh, $75. $75. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, you also have three quantity plants in a two by four. How far away is the light? I just had to move them. I was out of town for three days and they shot up tremendously. They were about eight inches away from the lights. Uh, now I put it back up to about 18. Okay. And I have another two foot to go before I run out of room. So I'm, I'm, I'm trestling, just like I've learned from your videos. Okay. And uh, I've already got two. I had to put one trestle down at 18 inches, and I just had to put another one down because they shot up 12 inches in three days. I'm not 12, I'm six inches in tw uh, three days in the center. And there's a lot of tops on your plants, too. So it's not just six inches. It's six inches times a lot of tops, right? Yes. They, they look, I, I wish I could go live and show you what I have because it's beautiful. <laughs> I'm also doing, doing one that's a deep water, I'm doing one that's a deep water culture, too. And it, it is, we call it baby because it's just off the wall. Okay. So let me ask you a question about your deep water culture. What size bucket are you in? Five gallon buckets. I have two of them. Okay. One of them I use to monitor my um, pH and uh, you know make changes because she's drinking a lot. She is always thirsty, so um, she's drinking about two gallons every two days. I mean, about a gallon a day is what she's drinking. Okay. You say you have two um, buckets. So wait, wait. You say you have two buckets, but one plant. Are you telling me that you have the second bucket is only for pH control? So you actually have two plants on the table and one plant in DWC? 
I have uh, no, I have three on the table and one in DWC. So you have four plants total. Yes, sir. Okay. Are there are there any other surprises? Do you have any other plants in any other systems? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, but I, uh, okay. the DWC is under LED. So now there's a the 600 watt light. Is this an HID or mm -hmm. an LED? What is this? Uh, the 600 is uh, uh, MH right now. MH. Getting ready to switch oh, okay. over to HPS. Okay, so it's MH. And you also have an LED now, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, tell me about the LED. So 385 watt. Let me... Branding? I can give you branding. No, I don't really care. Okay, it's got the double switch, one for veg, one for flower. Um, I wish I could go live so you can see this baby. I'm in my room, little book grow room. Um, <laughs> okay, that's fine. So how big that, is the space now? Now that we know how much light you have, how big is the space? Okay. Uh, the room is six and a half feet by nine foot eight. With the typical eight foot ceilings. <clears throat> okay. So we know the light, we know the space, we know the plant count. Now, you're having excellent results. So I would just like to ask, the, I'd just like to make the observation that you probably have a lot of canopy. So how much canopy do you have? Because you're on the fifth week of veg and you're at a thousand watts worth of light. So you're gonna be finishing with like a lot more light. So my, my question is, how big is the canopy? Uh, the trestle is three foot wide by six foot long, it's double layered, and there's no empty space. Nice. So 18, uh, almost 18 square feet. That's just on the three plants. Uh, today, I have to build something for baby because her branches are long. They're really starting to get thicked out, and she's going to collapse if I don't build her support system. So I'm going to do that today. It'll be a um, three by three support system. So she has plenty of room to lay down if she wants to, and not take and take all the load off of her. Okay, so this is eighteen times one point five, so that's twenty-seven square <clears throat> feet. Okay, so I would just like to point and out, got, and let me say this: let me get this off my chest. Let me get this off my chest now. It's an honor to be speaking to you, Grill Boss. I never, I've called in several times. It's a, uh, you are the bomb. I love your show. You're, you, I, I watch a lot, you know, a couple of different shows. I used to watch a lot until I found yours. And now pretty much whenever you got something going on, it's on. So appreciate you all so you much. do for the community. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's an interesting perspective going from grower to the guy behind the counter that has to answer all the questions. So it is an interesting perspective. Yeah. But I appreciate the compliments. Thank you so much. Now, back to the math. I would like to suggest that you're going to, you're going, if you're at 600 now and you're going to have to go up to, I mean, if they flower, they're going to get bigger. If you're, if you're considering right now, if you're at 18 inches and you're at week five veg, I, I, I and when I talk about this 18 inches right here, I'm talking about, um, this is this is just straight tops to the plant. You have to have one top in every hole, in every, right? You have to have one top when you're at the start of flower. So um, I, I'm going to make the suggestion that this is what happens when you veg for too long in hydro and why hydro is usually a very short four week rotation in veg, eight weeks in flower and why that when you do this in hydro, you tend to not do three light rotations. You do two light rotations where you veg, then flower in each one, and you get a harvest about every 45 days, but you tend to not veg in a two light rotation in hydro because in hydro, you're time locked. 
And that was actually yeah. mm-hmm. so. If you're time locked down on 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 hydro, uh, by your eight, if you're time locked down by in a two light rotation by having an eight week flower, then if you have an eight week veg in hydro, the plants are fucking huge. I mean, you're like you're in a five by five space, like eighteen inches deep. I know it's three by six, but if you look at the math here, the math three by six with one and eighteen inches of top gives you a volume, a canopy volume of 27 square feet and if you look at a five by five space if you have a five by five you get a canopy volume of 25 square feet and that's where your yield comes from so if you've got the veg the problem is what i tell you is that at the end of flower you end up you require about 50 cubic feet with a thousand watt light you're sort of at a thousand watts now with a 600 watt mh and a and a 385 watt LED. So eight weeks from now, when your plants are twice as big, and literally the problem is you're now going to end up with like 36 inch buds. And they cannab- um, cannabis tends to not grow like this indoors. So you're gonna you're sort of gonna lose. You really didn't want three feet. You really want to max out like two feet worth of bud um, in something in terms of this i'll pull up a picture this is always when you grow indoors and you trellis your plants this is always what you're looking for is this shape right here with one bud in every hole possible this is maximum yield and this is what you're trellising for but when you look at this you also have to understand that if you were to rotate it such that you were looking at the depth of the bud these buds are finishing at 18 to 24 inches the only way to get more weight would be to finish 24 to 36 inch buds. And indoors doesn't grow like outdoors. So you really sort of max out. And all we're talking about is the power curve here. Um, you can't, if you rev it too high, you fall out of the power band or you blow a motor. So in this particular case with this image, this is about as good as you can get in terms of your yield when you scrog something. So you you veg them a little too big so if we had taken a step yeah. back and you've started flowering a few weeks earlier i would have been more pleased because then you would have been at oh my plants are three feet away from the 600 watt light and the led is huge i have enough canopy it's one foot deep and then over the next eight weeks it'll double now what happens is do the shit grows so fast when you're in hydro that you're gonna have to deal the you're gonna have to deal with like where are you gonna put it because the space isn't gonna get any bigger and it's tough to grow them tall. <laughs> that's what ha- those are the problems that yeah, winners that's have. Exactly right. Those are the problems that winners have. It's not the same problem that beginners have, and there is a big difference between the beginners and the winners, and that that difference is the experience to do a good job and i gotta tell you you're doing a bang out bang up job in that dwc i just want to point out one thing to you so at some point i'm sure that i will have a book that's completely marked so i never have to do this again and I'll be like, oh shit, that's how I'll know I've really arrived. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm considering uh, after this run, I'll be able to do a uh, pretty light rotation um, using the deep water culture style. So we're, uh, that's what we're, I'm shooting for. It, uh, this, this crop will produce the funds necessary to upgrade the system. I that's that sounds like you're winning to me. Um, this is just one of the things that I always want you guys to be aware of because he has a couple of systems. And the previous caller was talking about media and the success he was having. When when I talk about media, I don't care if you're growing in rock wool, soil, cocoa, some soil that you made up, read about on the internet. Don't care. If you're in something that surrounds and protects the roots that you don't have to worry about for five, six, seven days at a time, you're in media. 
And then you'd be going something like hydro, where you have to water four times a day. This is what some people call rock or hydroton or those little clay balls. And on the surface of those little clay balls, like you see in this picture up here, the surface is rough, it's coarse, and it traps moisture. The roots can then grow between the hydroton, the rock, the pebble. The roots can grow between them because there's more oxygen in the environment than there is with soil or cocoa because that packs in more material yeah, levels the water. Say that again. No, I, I'm sorry. The, uh, my boss came in and was talking to me. I'm getting her to leave the room. Ah, well, okay. we all prioritize, and I can respect your priority, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I apologize to my boss. <laughs> ah, that's spectacular. Boss, you got to go. So anything that per surrounds and protects the roots. Then we have the hydroton that holds some moisture on its surface and the roots are forced to pull the moisture off of that hydroton rock pebble. And then it grows between them and you have to water the pebble four times a day, six times a day, depending on the size of the bucket and how much, how much um, root there is and how big the plant is. <clears throat> From there, there are systems like aeroponics, where you leave the media and you grow in water surrounded by air. Aeroponics, plants live in the water surrounded by air. Hydroponics, their plants live in the water and live in the air, and they're occasionally surrounded by water. In media, they're always surrounded, the roots are always surrounded and protected. And that's why when we follow this straight across, if you have a problem in media, it's the slowest grow. So you're gonna have the longest time to react. And if you have a problem in hydro, it happens faster. And if you have a problem in aeroponics, it's over, you start over. And so that's the end of that for, for that. So, so aeroponics tends to have a quicker failure, higher failure rate. However, when we look at terms of yield, in, in terms of yield, yes, aeroponics happens faster at 55 days, but I, I'll tell you what the difference is. The difference is because you have a short veg, because you don't veg for eight weeks in hydro because the shit grows so big, hydro is more of a professional system. And when we define a professional system, we also have to define different growth, different goals. And we're, and we're the home grower wants the best guys that do fast grows with a short veg flower time want more yield in a shorter time when you do more yield in a shorter time that's a professional grow you're looking for yield over quality so it, we immediately diverge on two paths with ca growing cannabis are you looking for quantity value are you looking for quality higher value less weight but there is definitely a difference between hydro when you grow two buds next to each other there is a difference for no other reason than in soil if it takes a little longer and all the magic happens at the end then when you grow in soil or media and it takes longer and you have more end time you get more magic so the higher qualities are always in media Notice I didn't mention which media or which nutrient or how hot it is. I'm just suggesting that they take longer in media. And so if they take longer, then you get more magic at the end. So when we look at that, we can see that media has the highest quality, arrow has the lowest. And I don't mean by any stretch of the imagination, border weed. I'm just suggesting that there's something about a soil grow. It's soft, it's spongy. It, it's, it, it gives off an aroma, there's a difference. It's not quite as dense as a hydro bud. A hy and this perhaps may be one of the few things you can tell between buds. I mean, you can't tell nutrients, can't tell what light, can't tell anything. But when someone grows in soil and they do a good job, uh, a month after it comes down with a nice cure, it's spongy. It's humid. It, it burns. It, it has the most, the most smelly, flavorful. When they look at, when you look at cards and you, you know, like marijuana attributes, and you look at them and they say woodsy, pungy aroma, or smells like diesel, jet fuel. How you really get those? Like a, like a one of the wine people, like a, oh, like a, I don't even know what the what those wine people are called, but I'm sure it's there. 
So just like knowing anything about anything. So there you go. Like there is a difference and that's reflected right here at the bottom in terms of speed and quality. Now there's also a skill level that's related. So what I caution you guys is that you really have to pay attention to the relationship of what you're trying to accomplish. So you're in Hydra, you have a high risk system, but I, I mean, things are going well for you. Um, I, I would have, so you have four plants on a five week veg. I, I would have said pick one way to be because this these two things doing two things of a kind of a size under a light but yeah i mean if just from a just from a just from a cost a perspective of doing this uh if you had to instead of doing one of these if you had to double your tray you would have been at 150 dollars worth of rock and if you're at 150 dollars worth of rock if you were to do this tray if you were to do four of those instead if you notice in the picture that they have a little six inch mesh bucket lid like instead of 150 mm -hmm. bucks you could have got a six inch mesh bucket lid bought one bag of 25 liters for 25 bucks and it would have lasted you four grows you'd use the buckets you might buy a new bucket lid just because whatever but it's six times four 24 bu 24 bucks a grow to replace the lid just because at your success we both know that picking a trying to save a six dollar lid and picking out those roots that split the bucket side open oh it's never worth it for the kind for the kind of success that you're having so in a garden like yours shorter veg you're going to finish flower dwc do the whole thing consistent even if you do their each one their own bucket whatever it is you want shorter veg um that way you start flowering earlier so the light that you have lasts longer so you're you're flowering at 12 inches instead of 18 you're flowering at 12 inches instead of 18 see what i'm saying yes yes I, and, and we i kind of picked that up i should have just gone to a three week or four week instead of the actually i'm in five and a half right now today so yes uh, they certainly got out of hand they they love what i'm feeding them I spoil them rotten, so I'm maintaining the pH at 5.8 daily. So, uh, um, yeah, they are definitely spoiled. But uh, why is it that the pH has changed from climbing to dropping? Okay, if you tell me that the roots are still healthy and that there's no problem with the plant, then you leave me in a position where I'm either going to have to say I'm smarter than the plant or I'm going to say that there may be other factors. For instance, one of the factors, let's talk about the water that you're using. Tap water or RO water? Tap water. Okay, what's the PPM of your tap water? Uh, uh, like 40, 40 or 80. Okay, so, <clears throat> so we're gonna say 50. It doesn't tell us everything that's in your tap water, but if you were to fill up your res with tap water, what would the pH be? 7.2. Uh, How big is the res? Uh, it's uh, 20 gallons, but I only use 12. Okay. How much pH do you have? To, how much pH down do you have to add? Uh, usually, uh, to adjust it from a 6.2 to a 5.8, I'll use about two and a half teaspoons. Okay, so if you just put res, if you just put tap water in there, and then adjusted it down, how much do you know? So two and plus two and a half. So you said more than 2.5 teaspoon. That's fine. Okay, so now you're starting to have the problem with pH up. So now your plants are going down, and you're after adding pH up. First pH up is not as strong as pH down. So how much pH up are you adding? Um, well, I don't really, as soon as it gets down to 5.7, <coughs> I start adding, and I usually better add a teaspoon and a half. Okay. To bring it back up. So you're adding 1.5 TS. Yes. Okay. So P, um, up is not as strong as, I don't think up is as strong as down. Um, 
if you You're were correct. to if you were to just replace the water instead of doing ph up if you were to just replace the 12 gallons with with more with 12 more gallons would it take three or four days to change it again uh yes two to two two to three days okay and when you put ph up in it how long does it take to adjust uh, it's, it's immediately. It's, it's, uh, I have a circulation system inside the reservoir with two aeration stones, so it's, it circulates it very well and changes it within minutes. Um, how long, when you, add, when you add the pH up, how long does it stay adjusted? Um, I, I spoil my babies, so as soon as it starts coming up, I add it. Uh, <laughs> like it'll change from 5.8. To, it takes 24 hours for it to go to 5.95. I usually mess with it every two days, but I check it every day. Okay, so two that's, days. That's the most work I do is on pH. Okay, so two days, and it doesn't matter if it's pH up, you set it, or it's two days on pH down. Okay, that's fine. Um, yes, sir. If you say, if, if, whenever you have, to, whenever we talk about pH swings, there's a couple of concerns. That, and this is just the medic in me talking. There's a couple of concerns that we always have to think. And you say the roots are good. So we always have to worry about, are we about to do something that we don't need to do? So you say the roots are good. And by good, I mean bright white and bushy tailed. The plants themselves, you're giving them that, the thumbs up that they look good. When you talk about them, you are super pleased. You have 12 gallons in the res. So, ah, the show's going to come to an end soon. I hear a customer, but they can wait. So, um, you're going to have 12 gallons, and you're making a 1.5 TSP change every two days, and uh, I, don't, I don't have a problem. Now, I don't see what you're doing as a problem. I, I see the only thing that I can offer you would be if everything looks healthy, then the plants are changing it themselves. You can fight five seven five eight. You might let them ex explore a little, and go down to five four. I, I couldn't tell you exactly that good because everything looks good, so things are chugging along. I can tell you that one and a half teaspoons, that you playing dosatron guy at one and a half teaspoons every two days. <laughs> It's okay because of all the fiddling that you're doing, you're not telling me that you're going in there and picking and poking at your plants. You're telling me that you're adjusting the water and that's the most that you do. Dude, if a teaspoon and a half every two days is the most that you do, you're winning. You, you're winning, your LED is winning, your HID is winning, you're winning. And if you can finish this and win all the way to the end and get the bud that you're supposed to, I mean, you're, you're winning. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. I take a lot of my off my mind. Yeah, you really got to fly the uh, plant sometimes. One last question, Grogoff. So, you know, I'm like I mentioned at the beginning, I'm getting ready to go to flower. Should I do a flush before I go to flower? That way I... I flush it with water, clean up my reservoirs, get everything nice and clean, start from zero to do my start my flower phase. They look good. Why are you adding stuff? Listen, let's okay. let's just take it let's okay. just look at that. You want to do a flush. What's it gonna get you? I mean, all you can do is knock the nutrients out of the nutrient receptors. And earlier, just like we talked about alcohol and CNS drugs and smoking versus eating cannabis, they affect different receptors. There are receptors in the nutrients, I mean, in the roots, and the roots grab the nutrients. So if you remove all the water, by definition, the only nutrients that are left are locked into the root receptors. Now, we know why the vendors tell you rinse, 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 flush, flush, flush. They want you to use more 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 but the reality is let's look at what it does what does it do it's a simple thing if you put more fresh water in the only thing a flush could do would be to remove the nutrients locked into the receptors that's the only thing they could do all right, right. 
So my observation don't would be... Don't mess with it if it ain't broke. And don't, when you go into flower, the plant doesn't go into flower just because you change the light. I mean, you're going to feed another week worth of grow nutrient. Then you're going to feed a week worth of half grow, half flower. Then you're going to feed a week worth of flower. Then you're going to start adding shit to that. Right, right, right. Right, so there is no, none of these intense all the bomb. Thank you, I appreciate that. All right, so I've got a, you guys can all hear, I've got a customer. I actually have two customers at my door. They're phoning the store, you can hear it. I'm the grow boss. And my sponsors, of course, are always Great White Microbes and Orca. Clonex, you see the products behind me, Thermoflow and Mondi and, and Clonex Rooting Gel and Clonex Solution and Clonex Mist for taking clones. And if you have any questions and you want to talk to me, we're going to do the show again tomorrow. We do it weekends at 9 a.m. And I just want you to know that I'm going to double charge the customer that's been calling my store for my show because, like, you look in, he's staring at me and he sees what I'm doing. And he just keeps calling the show. So I just want you to know, always be kind to the people at the Hydro Store. Always support my sponsors. I'm the Grow Boss. Thanks so much. And let's see, control. That was a super smooth exit, right? Did you see how I did that?